Ning, it's good to see you. We'd like to begin with a song in our hymnal, if you're using your hymnal, number 184, Wonderful, Wonderful Jesus. Let's stand as we sing this, and it's a chorus. Let's sing it two times, okay? <clears throat> Wonderful, wonderful Jesus, who can compare with thee? Wonderful, wonderful Jesus, fairer than all art thou to me. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Who can compare with thee? Wonderful, wonderful Jesus, fairer than all art thou to me. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus, all my soul. Please be seated. Take your prayer list, if you would. I would like to highlight a couple things. Just a reminder that we typically run these for two weeks and uh, ask that you call in for updates. And um, we do have a few that we kind of rotate because they're long-term situations. Uh, two of those are at the bottom there, Nathan Childs and Leonard Conway. Um, pray for these two in their long-term medical matters there. I, I believe David Burley is in need of special prayer tonight. I think maybe he took a little bit of a downturn or not wanting to eat much. Um, and then uh, back up, uh, Bert Kyle's granddaughter um, had, a, had what is believed to be a grand mal seizure, but not uh, a neurological issue, which is good. She has been diagnosed with COVID, and I believe she has a little one uh, as well. Um, pray for uh, her and the family. She does have a very supportive family and church. And the Olson surgery went well. A uh, recovery is um, um, going to take a while. Pray for him. Melissa Cunningham's Medical procedure scheduled for last Friday has been postponed. Then pray for Ken Lowry's brother as he's working through um, shingles and some infection. And uh, each of these is important as we divide into prayer groups. I uh, ask you to be praying for these. Um, let's begin tonight. Lord, thank you that, Lord, every matter uh, you know about, you care about, you... you um, Lord, help us. You've called us. Uh, you, you've told us to call upon you, and uh, we do pray for these whom we've mentioned especially. Lord, be with us tonight as we um, as we sing, as we are reminded of some things from a number of our missionaries, and then um, this passage in Jude chapter one. Lord, uh, uh, we just commit the service now to your keeping and care in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together, Jesus is coming again. 282, if you're using your hymnal. <laughs> Marmala 
last message we bring glorious carol we sing wonderful word of the king jesus is coming again coming again coming again maybe morning maybe noon maybe evening and maybe soon coming again coming again oh all our wonderful day it will be jesus is coming again forest and flower exclaim mountain and meadow the same all earth and heaven proclaim jesus is coming again coming again coming again maybe morning maybe noon maybe evening and maybe soon coming again again oh what a wonderful day it will be jesus is coming again standing before him at last trial and trouble are past crowns at his feet we will cast Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, maybe soon, coming again, coming again. Oh, Jesus is coming again. Uh, a few announcements tonight. Uh, just keep in mind, if you would, that uh, after this evening, the telephone directory uh, will be um, uh, pulled from the... Um, Welcome Center, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get some printed by Sunday. Uh, Lord willing, have the stock in hand. Then, if you would, just a couple of things. Neighborhood Bible Time, those dates are there. Uh, family Camp, and uh, Spiritual Emphasis Retreat. So keep those things in mind, if you would. All right. I want to, uh, if you take your prayer list, you'll notice we're highlighting the Thomases, missionaries to Ukraine, and elsewhere. They have um, been involved in another country in Southeast Asia, as well as uh, India. So um, I want to read a couple of things. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit from each of these that I have tonight. Um, um, he'll make you think with this first line. The war in Ukraine is now heading into its 10th year. It began when Russia occupied Crimea and parts of southeast Ukraine in 2014. It has entered its third year since the full-scale mass invasion took place February 24, 2022. Sadly for the Ukrainians, this holds to be a troubling time. With Russia's offensive growing over the last few weeks, there have been days when more than 100 missiles and drones targeted innocent civilians in Ukrainian communities. Some think that Putin is wanting to take Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city located only 20 miles from the Russian border. This has sparked a new anxiety among residents. 
This week, portions of Kharkiv were, it's, it's spelled with a K, um, uh, K-H-A-R-K-I-V, were left without power, heat, and water. Compassion for Ukraine, the humanitarian arm of the Thomas's ministry, has faithful partners serving at risk of their own lives and those of their families in this region. One of our pastors gave this update. Thank you for your prayers and support. Recently, shelling has become more frequent. Sirens are howling uh, so often. All of this affects um, one's true state of being, both physical and mental. We thank the Lord for making it possible to give people the hope and the love of God. Yesterday, we visited the village. The situation there is the same as everywhere else in our areas, yet um, people experiencing intense shelling in nearby regions have come seeking refuge in this village. We distributed food, bedding, and most importantly, the gospel. An interesting fact is that when we came to the village for the first time, people were wary of us because we were Baptists. But now a large percentage of those present have accepted the gospel. Uh, I don't know the population there, but uh, it's becoming more and more visible that people's disposition toward the Lord is awakening. Awakening during a time of war. How we rejoice in the goodness and faithfulness of God during such a merciless time. How we give praise for his devoted servants and the privilege it is to partner with them. These ambassadors of reconciliation are looking past the dangers of war and their own well-being to a greater goal. The glory of Christ in hopeless hearts who live under Satan's tyranny. But question uh, should, must be asked, how long will these current doors for the gospel remain? Could these open doors become less, lost opportunities? If Russia occupies Kharkiv, the doors will close. Uh, compassion for Ukraine is moving forward by faith with a sense of urgency to take advantage of this time. Pray, the, pray for the protection of our team members, for the Lord's continued provision through compassion for Ukraine and for the power of the gospel to reach the lost and hopeless before eternity reaches them. Then from medically retired from the Philippines, missionaries Ed and Mila Valancourt but not retired from service as they are now located stateside, uh, these words come. Mila and I recently celebrated our 55th anniversary. Um, <clears throat> I am on standby as the volunteer chaplain of Gulf Breeze Baptist Hospital. Um, uh, there's a particular time frame he was... Um, mentions. Speaking of that particular service and time frame, I recently was able to pray for a patient in ICU. She was out of it, breathing very heavily. She d did not even know I was there, but I, I prayed for her. The next day, upon my return to her room, she was sitting up and in good spirits. After sharing my testimony and sharing the Word of God, she prayed to receive Christ as her Savior. I rejoice at such opportunities the Lord has given me. Just yesterday, I was rejoicing with a fellow veteran volunteer at our VA outpatient clinic. Two days before, he had a cow valve placed in his heart. Since he has had several heart attacks, it was needful that we prayed for him and the surgery. Upon hearing me talking to him, another veteran overheard me mention that our church had prayed for him. He said to me, I need prayer. I immediately engaged in conversation with him. Now 77 years old, he found himself homeless. He shared with me the circumstances that led him to such a devastating life. He assured me that he knew the Lord as his Savior and that he was prepared for eternity, but was desperate. Um, he needed lodging. After I prayed with him, he said that he was waiting to be seen by a member of the department that helps such homeless veterans. Then um, I had extra occasion to have communication back and forth some with Tom Needham. And if you could add to your prayer list this one request before I um, read 
uh, we have some pictures to show too. But I, want, I just want to say this. Please, pray, please, please be praying for our daughter Elizabeth. Now she's the, the oldest of the uh, five girls. How many are up there? Five girls and a wife. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She may look like a daughter. But, um, so Elizabeth is the oldest. Elizabeth, we support. And one of the reasons that she touched our heart was she just went without support. Um, lived for quite a while with her parents, but she has um, reached out to some young ladies. Now, all of them have moved to Bafusam, which is south and east of um, uh, their, their prior location in Sabga. But his request is she, she's experiencing nerve damage in her feet and hands. She has a wonderful spirit and attitude. We're quite concerned for her health. She's making a difference in so many lives. Somewhere he, yeah, he writes, um, she has a big responsibility, responsibility as she has taken 15 young girls into her home. Now, they help her out a lot, but she's kind of like mom. And, uh, and by the way, she has translated, um, let's see. I'm sorry. Kathy is the one I've been talking about. <laughs> wrong name. Yeah. Um, wrong connection. Um, thank you, though. Um, Kathy is the one we support. Um, but Bethany, who was with us recently, is she third born? Fourth born? Anyway, she, um, she has raised her support, and uh, we were able to help her when she was here uh, with a generous love offering. But we support monthly Kathy. I'm not sure how, how Elizabeth's support is working. I don't remember. She kind of lost track, but these these young ladies are just serving wonderfully. Any boy, Elizabeth, but I think Kathy also has young ladies in her home. Yeah, I just don't know how many. Anyway, they're busy. I, I'm busy trying to keep up with them. They're busy doing what they're doing. Um, let me read a little bit. Uh, the Needhams are a little bit back and forth. Um, to the states for a variety of reasons and they had recently had a trip back to the states while they were here they he writes we put 4,000 miles on our old pickup in three and a half weeks so not too much sit down and rest time um, the day we left Iowa the, that's his home area the Lord gave me a great opportunity to witness to my cousin David who knows essentially nothing about the Lord He's, he's a special needs person. And, and when we use that term, everyone is different um, and uh, have unique needs. Anyway, he had a great opportunity. He said, I pray the Lord, God's word will enter his heart. Um, fellow missionaries, the Sanderlands, who's also a, has a, a pilot's license as a tool uh, and they kind of trade off and help each other. The Sanderlands leave this week from Cameroon for a one-year furlough. That will leave me alone regarding the aviation ministry. Um, Brother Rushing, uh, who heads up Wings as Eagles out of Oshkosh, is coming in May with a couple young prospects for future preacher pilots. Notice the order, preacher pilot. Um, the airplane is a tool. You don't, anyway, we trust the Lord to bring like-minded people. Uh, Brother Sam and I plan to make many flights to the far eastern and northern regions of the country to evangelize, distribute tracts and Bibles, and uh, trusting the Lord to see churches planted. We're, we're making some decisions regarding the printing of tens of thousands of French New Testaments 
uh, just to review geographically, and this is rough, if you were just to cut Cameroon into a third in the west and two thirds in the east, you'd have the English sector in the west and the French sector in the east. There's been a civil uprising sometime back, and this is when that missionary was killed, um, maybe two years ago now. Um, and so they moved to Bafusam, which is in the French sector. So they're all learning French. And uh, so that's why he's talking about the eastern part and northern. And um, uh, so uh, they're trying to get French um, um, New Testaments in order for distribution in the French sector. You say, why the difference? Because the French ruled that part of Cameroon at one time. The British ruled uh, the western part at a different time in their colonial history. Um, so they've been working toward two radio stations, one in Sapka, which I've seen um, up there on the hill above their house. We hiked up, uh, I don't know if I actually touched the antenna, but I, uh, we were up near there. And um, then they're trying, uh, working on another one in a, in a different location that'll give them a broader um, a wavelength pattern. Uh, f uh, anyway, he writes this, frequencies have now been assigned for our two radio stations, but they are the same frequency as the national radio station. <laughs> There's definitely a need for coordination um, in the assignment of frequencies. Please uh, pray we get this matter resolved. What I'm gonna read next, um, may not make sense to many of us, but I think it's important reading. We're getting closer to going on the air. We plan to buy four large lithium batteries and a large DC to AC converter. Because of the unsteadiness of the power supply and the grid, we run all the current through batteries and inverter and an inverter to isolate us from frequent power cuts and surges and low voltages. When the current is on, we charge the batteries. When it is off, the batteries supply the power, hence the need for batteries. We have effective solar panels, panels at the station in Sabka, that's where the first radio station is. We hope to eventually install wind generators for the new station there near Bafusan. I thank the Lord for Pastor Julius. He has proven to be far more effective than I could be in working with all these issues. We also brought two Starlink satellite internet setups which will allow us to broadcast Camp Joy Revival Radio over the internet as an internet station operating at the same time as our regular stations. However, we just found out the Starlink has not been licensed in Cameroon. So we have to wait um, till that happens. Churches here are doing well, one last paragraph. There are still severe conflicts going on in the country not far from here. One group of rebel fighters was recently decimated by the military, which should bring much relief to the Akwaya region. That's the area that they were in, and it butts up against Nigeria. In fact, many in the Akwaya region, many believers, went across the border into Nigeria, and uh, one of the pastors followed them to help uh, be a pastor there to them. Um, so. Um, these in the Akwaya region are the ones who forced many of our, excuse me, they, this group of rebel fighters, were the ones who forced many of our churches to stop meeting. It reminds me of Acts 9.31, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. May this be the case in Akwaya. Uh, you've probably heard of the terrible persecution of Christians in neighboring Nigeria by the Fulani and others is spilling across the border in the Akwaya area and is directly impacting the villages where some of the believers still are. Pray for their protection. And that's from Tom Needham. I uh, have some pictures to show of uh, just some very recent baptisms, and of course they, they've trained with the Bible Institute. They're national pastors, and so they are seeing folks saved, see, seeing them grow and following the Lord in baptism, 
And uh, this is part of their trek. Um, I'm thinking from the airplane back to the village or vice versa, I'm not sure which. And the next picture is, I, I can't explain it to you. Oh, those fish, I think. Okay, then um, just a picture of two of the, the men that is working with Pastor Needham in the airplane and he constantly, I mean, that's where our communication kind of started. He said, thank you, you know, basically, thank you again for this airplane that you all helped to build and to pay for. And that was a $250,000 project. But he said, this has been so helpful. It's the same glycoming engine, but it's the whole structure gives them more horsepower. You can't see it from here, but there is a cargo pod that's new to this airplane that allows them to carry, not people, but um, um, supplies for one thing, um, gospels um, for dis and tracks for distribution for another. Um, I remember a flight we were on uh, where um, a family brought a, a fairly large bag of rice and they said to Brother Needham, do you, do you have, there were four of us, uh, do you have room to take this bag of rice back to, and they named a man who was in the Bible Institute and in training. He needs food to eat. And uh, Brother Needham had checked his weight um, loads and, and in light of the shortness of the, of the runway, which turned out to be the flight we had the emergency landing um, part way into on. He, he said, I just can't take that bag of rice. But he, he does what he can. And uh, so those are things they face. Oh, by the way, this, is, this, this will be interesting to you ladies, I think. I killed a snake right outside our door a few nights ago. I laid it out on the veranda. Not sure why he would do that. I guess because you don't want to bring it in the house. And in the morning, it was gone. I think an early bird crow picked it up as a nice breakfast. I'm sure glad we don't have that here. Okay, let's sing. Maybe that snake made it into the morning tacos. I don't know. Number 492 in our hymnal. Let's sing for the beauty of the earth. <clears throat> the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful I am of grateful praise for the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to I am of grateful praise for thyself best gift divine to our race so freely give for that great great love of thine peace on earth and joy in heaven Lord of all to 
sings a hymn of grateful praise. Number 382. Let's stand as we sing this together. Nearer, still nearer. Number 382, if you're using your hymnal. Sing verse two as the last. Nearer still, nearer, nothing I bring, not as an offering, only my sin. Please be seated. Turn, if you would, to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. Take your uh, study guide, if you would, tonight. And um, Jude is, is one of those, as the scriptures are, one of those books that's just packed. And there's so much there. We're just highlighting an aspect or two from the book. But it helps to get the context. And um, we started this study last week. We'll finish it tonight. And um, so we give you some information there in your notes about the author. Uh, he's writing to believers. Look at verse 20. But ye beloved. He's writing about some of the unsaved. In verse 23, and others save with fear, but the bulk of it is for believers to be um, contending for the faith, and one way of contending for the faith is being, um, in fact, earnestly contending for the faith is to be on guard. Verse 4, there are certain men crept in unawares, they're slippery, you don't always know who they are. Um, ungodly men turning the grace of God so focused on God's mercy that they ignore his um, call for truth and righteousness and justice and lasciviousness has to do with sexual sins and even they get to the point of denying um, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ Wherefore, he says, or I will therefore put you in remembrance. Um, and um, it goes on, it speaks of, of, of the angels which kept not their first estate, uh, those who followed uh, Lucifer out of, of heaven, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving them so, sums over to fornication, going after strange flesh, all the aberrations sexually, and, uh, and we're seeing so much of that in our day. Just the whole um, push toward losing uh, gender distinction. And uh, gender distinction is important. 
And uh, someone made the observation recently that when men claim to now be women, they generally dress in dresses, put on a lot of or ornamentation and makeup because they're identifying with women. And uh, Christians have kind of lost the gender distinction principle in scripture. And uh, sometimes from a distance, you can't tell who's who or what's what. Um, but that's our day. And uh, it, it's real. And uh, so he says in verse 8, Likewise, also these filthy dreamers. And that, that word filthy, did you ever have your mom tell you growing up, you are filthy. Now that's, that's physically Okay, and you come in from farm mud, you, you, can, you can look pretty bad. In fact, you come in from your yard, working on a truck, digging varmint nests out of your engine cavity over and over again. Uh, that's, that's problematic. If you want more on that, see Brother uh, Lowry. Uh, so, um, he says, these filthy dreamers, these wicked ones, and here's their characteristics. They defile the flesh, despise dominion, and I lost my place, and speak evil of dignitaries. Um, notice the next verse. Even Michael the archangel um, didn't have, he understood the chain of authority. He understood the principle of authority. He understood, and even he, uh, verse 9 when he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring rail against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. That's our approach, too. Uh, don't, we can't take on Satan ourselves. We've got to do it in the name of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, he goes on to say, verse 10, These speak evil of those things which they know not. Woe unto them, verse 11. And then, uh, working our way down, um, through the chapter, and this chapter is, is um, just dealing with this matter of contending for the faith and false teachers and evil men of our day. And uh, our challenge in this study that we started last week is basically to look at the fourfold um, admonition in verses number um, 20 and 21. Before we look again at 2021, 20 notice the, the threefold focus, the perspective. Verses 20 and 21, but ye beloved, Paul is right, uh, excuse me, Jude, Paul wrote half the New Testament. Jude wrote this one. Uh, um, so he's, he, he, Jude is saying, hey, but ye beloved, who's he talking to? These believers. How does that apply to us? I think the same way. And he gives four things. And we'll get to back to those. Then in verses 22 and 23, and this is down below personal application where you may want to make a note or two. But look at verses 22 and 23. And of some have compassion making a difference. That phrase, and of some, is not... Picking and choosing. Let's see, I'm going to have compassion on you and you, but not you. Oh, maybe you. No. It's those God leads to us and lays upon our heart as we... I, I can't, I can't, I can't help everybody. I mean, you can't either. Um, but, but make sure that those God leads our way that we're supposed to have compassion on, we have compassion. And then, and then it says, and some have compassion making a difference. Your some, S-O-M-E, those whom God has given us. Making a difference. Um, I just had a text before service from someone who attended here years ago and uh, with a special need and had been trying to get a hold of me. And, and I just saw it, partly because I left my phone home. My wife had to bring it to me. And... and um, um, 
I texted him back and said, the service. And I, I said, where are you? He said he was stranded. I, I, I did peek at it during one of the songs. I'm sorry, Tom. I just kind of see how this guy was doing. I haven't heard back. My point is, I'm not sure I can help him, but if I can, I'm going to try to somehow, some way. Um, so of some have compassion making a difference. And others with fear. Eternal punishment in hell forever is to be feared by all of mankind. Unless you're saved, and then we have the comforting hope of an eternity with God forever. And that leads us, if you would back up just for a moment, look at verse 21. The fourth thing there. This, uh, uh, in this, what I'm calling a fourfold pattern for the believer, is looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. How would you put that in your own words? Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Put it in your own words. Looking for what? Yeah, that forgiveness which brings... Salvation, which brings, yeah, eternal life. I mean, it's, it's just right there. Looking for, while you're wrestling through the details of living. Um, I've mentioned a number of times, I've been reading slowly um, a book by Tony Dungy. And uh, as I finished uh, one particular chapter this morning, he just made the comment, it, it seems simple, but it, it's profound, and yet it's simple. He said, everybody has problems in life. Get used to it. Does that sound like a coach? <laughs> We're going to work you hard. Get used to it. Just make up your mind. You're in it for the long haul. Till death do you part. Application to that is departing this life. Looking for. Okay, so... Um, back to uh, verse 23, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Someone is not saved, they're headed toward eternal fire. That's why it's imperative for us that we do all we can to, to share the gospel, to witness, which often takes many of us out of our comfort zone. Now, that's not always easy. But if we think of this person, and they may be saved, and I hope they are, but if they're not, and they don't get saved, it's going to be an eternal fire forever. And, and that, that should compel us to do what we can. And there are parts of the world that are faster than others in seeing people saved for a variety of reasons. But uh, our area is not easy. It, it is not easy here in the Pacific Northwest. And I would say all the way down to through the southern tip of California. So verses 22 and 23 focus on others. And then verses 24 and 25 focus on God. And uh, these are wonderful verses. Um, no one to him, Lord Jesus Christ, that died for us and now helps us, um, is able to keep you from falling. Of course, eternal destiny is, is in view there, but I believe the second application is he's here to help us, because there's other verses that speak to this, in this life as well. That's why the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God will deliver us from evil. He will help us. So, um, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. What makes us faultless? You might say, my mom, or my dad, or my uncle, or my grandfather, or my cousin. Maybe some member in your family is so godly, it's like you never see him hardly ever do anything wrong. 
Um, Romans 3.23 is still true. <laughs> All have sinned. But the, the point is, don't, don't say, well, everybody sins, so I guess I'll just sin too. I don't worry too much about it. That's not what God had in mind here. He, he wants to present us faultless, and the faultlessness comes how? how what makes you and I faultless um, before the presence of, uh, of the Almighty God? If, if every one of us, for some reason, right this moment, suddenly, all of us died. And all of us are saved. Brother Chris. Justified by Jesus. Yeah. 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 He did that for us. That's salvation. I, I can't do it. I can't. I, none of us. None of us. Um, I, I had, had someone recently show me a quote. And they said, uh, what do you think about this? I said to myself, first of all, I'm not going to text an answer. My thumbs don't have 20 minutes in me to do something legible. I wrote back, can we talk about this next time we see you, <laughs> each other? And we did. We talked about it. And the quote had to do with somebody's theology that basically the underlying belief that they had was that Old Testament people are saved by works. That is not true. But that's, that's what they, they, were, they were teaching and preaching. And um, Abraham, we call him the father of faith, justified by faith. Faith. Not faith in faith. Faith in, there's an object, the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. Um, you've heard it said, pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. Now, that may be good in the army. Um, uh, and, and it's an expression. It's kind of like, do the best you can. Come on, you can do better. Okay, but I can't do enough better to save myself. There's absolutely no way. It is, it is... In fact, blessed are they that mourn. What's that mean? Blessed are they that mourn. And you look at the context of what we call the Beatitudes. It's talking about mourning over sin. I had a visitor recently. As he left the foyer, he said, I, I'm not, I, can't, I can't verify the statement, but he said, I think that's the first sermon I've heard on sin in 25 years. Now, I, 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 maybe that was, uh, what's the word? Um, no. Um, when you, not an exaggeration, when you say something that's kind of tongue in cheek. facetious yeah you all have good terminology I, I, it's just not coming the, the point is um, we're saved by faith in Jesus Christ and people who undermine that truth that's a serious thing and that's what Jude is all about earnestly contending for the faith and, and he mentions some heinous wickedness out there True in his day, true in our day. Okay, time is flying by. Let's look at these last two uh, patterns here in, in verse, verse 21. So the first one, building up yourselves. Personal edification, growing. And building uh, on the faith foundation. Um, there's no other <coughs> foundation but the Lord Jesus Christ. Praying in harmony with the Holy Spirit in keeping with his will, energized by the burden of the Holy Spirit. Praying in the power of the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 6, 18. Then, keep yourselves, verse 21, in the love of God. What if he had stopped with keep yourselves in God and he left out in the love of God? Well, what's, the, what's the problem with that?
keep yourselves in God. Yes, focusing on works. But I think, I think in addition to, it's, it's, just, it's just, we're not saved by works. We're not kept by works. But what's the motivation tucked in there? Uh, love for God. I, I tell you, in younger years, I valued rubbing shoulders with, in fact, in, in prayer groups, older men who obviously, when they prayed, just loved the Lord. I remember a particular farmer I worked for one time, odd job, and uh, go to church with him, and he'd, he'd pray, and, uh, and he didn't have a lot of this, this world's earthly goods, but he knew, he knew where the real goods were, <laughs> and, and they were coming. And uh, I'm not saying don't save, I'm just saying you, you, you do what you can here, but there are times you, you, you're kind of, things are kind of lean, and, you, and you're, you're, you're understanding where, where the uh, real value is in life, and it's coming. So uh, it's not referring to working solely by our own efforts, but working because as 2 Corinthians 5.14 says, the love of Christ constraineth us and his spirit works through us. Someone read, if you would, uh, Titus chapter 2. And that's, I tried to pick an example here of those who build up yourselves and others, Barnabas, uh, praying, Apostle Paul, Ephesians 6. Titus here, someone read Titus 2.13, if you would. Just real loud, if you got whoever's got it. Yeah. So while we're while we're keeping ourselves, uh, be holy as I'm holy, focusing on what God focuses on, and His heartbeat is for people. Um, we look for that blessed hope. There it is again. Similarly to the first part of verse 20, 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for, Titus 2.13 says similarly, looking for that blessed hope. Uh, 2 Peter uh, 3.12 says, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth out in the eternal future. We're not there yet. As bad as the atomic bomb was, uh, and I had a preacher one time say, I came through World War II, I think I was in hell. Well, I didn't experience what he experienced, but I, I know that wasn't, that was maybe a foretaste in a sense. But hell is a place of torments, never to be satiated, the torment separated from God and light in darkness forever. That's where the love of Christ constrains us because Jesus was constrained to go to the cross or you and I would be dead in our sins while we yet live. Boy, I, I, just, I just hope, uh, and I think the par part of this is don't lose sight of these truths. So we look for, in fact, in fact, um, 2 Peter 3.12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. We're, we're in the heavens being on, f so we're looking forward to it. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me try to give us the best illustration I can at the moment on, on, on this matter of hasting. You've all heard this. You've heard of teenagers probably say something like this. I am bored. Ever heard that? Ever thought that? How many of you are still, you guys can't answer that. How many, how many of you fi find life boring? You have a boring moment in the last week? You say, yes, give me more. It's called rest. 
It's called catching up. I'm, I'm, I'm dead on my feet. I don't know how you can smile in light of what I'm guessing you all go through at the Knezevich household. And she was out knocking, hanging door hangers recently. I'm saying to myself, I didn't send you home, I felt like it. I said to myself, how on earth is she, is she doing this? Because the middle name of the Knezevich family is Energizer. Okay. But it's really the energizing work of the Holy Spirit. You know. And some people have more energy than others. Some say, you know, I have just enough energy to get out of bed. And I hardly feel like I've got that much energy. I mean, health is maybe dissipated to the point. But this hasting. So if you ever find yourself in a boring moment, hey, I'm kind of caught up, don't really have anything to do, feel like how to do something, what helps you to get through that lag time? Let me put it this way. You're driving in a car, the radio doesn't work, Everybody's talked themselves to death. It's quiet. You got hours to go. We're not there yet. You say, man, if I could just fast forward the next two hours. And then the thought comes, well, if I did it this time, if it were possible, and I'd do it another time, I'd be fast forwarding a lot of my life away. No, no, there's stuff to do. So back out of the car for a moment. You're home. I've had to pray this sometimes. Lord, I know I ought to be doing something. Um, I, I, I don't really need rest. I'm just kind of... Oh. Lord, energize me and energize me to do something productive that you want me to do. You know, God answers that prayer. And then, you know, it's kind of like, Lord, quit energizing me. <laughs> I'm just worn out. You know, three kids call you at once, you know. Uh, but, but hasting, what is it? You're working while you're looking forward to the Lord's coming. Productively working, praying, witnessing. Um, some have compassion making a difference. So much here, so much here. Lord, thank you for your, your word. Thank you for this reminder that our focus is, yes, we, there's some things we need to do that we ourselves need, but uh, we need to be looking uh, toward others and all of it, Lord, because we're looking toward you. Help us to build up ourselves as you have instructed us on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping ourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Be with us as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.